Our scripture this morning is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. It's a great scripture. It's uh, one that's quoted a lot. In fact, we have it on a wall hanging at our house. And uh, it's a good reminder. It is taken out of context, however. Uh, the, the specific group of people to whom that is addressed uh, is, uh, is fairly clear in scripture. But I believe that you can extrapolate it out and see that that, that promise is something that God offers all of his people and not just that group of people back then at that point in time. So I think it's applicable to us as uh, as a church and as a faith family as we're moving forward together. Um, As you know, uh, if you read your emails, uh, I am going to retire at the end of June this year. That is my intention. Uh, The uh, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, if you know what I mean. And we've been through a lot together these last 10, almost 10 years. When I came here in 2014, we were yoked together with Surf City Church as one church. Um, And when I came here, then Pastor Anthony Boger went down to be the senior pastor at Surf City while he continued to serve this church uh, in a part-time manner to help us with the transition. And over the years, we have been through a lot, a lot. We have uh, restructured our administration, uh, our administrative organization. We've established life groups, expanded our outreach and missions. Rick Seaver was hired um, shortly after my arrival, and through him we developed Messy Church and Acorns to Oaks and Knights of Agon and some very exciting children's ministries. And then the pandemic hit. My goodness. Everything went upside down. We, we had to shift to all online ministry for the first several months. We started during that period the daily devotions and then a morning prayer each day online. Uh, our services were online. Many of you participated in them, uh, even though it was very odd and different and uh, we were like fish out of water. We started off uh, live streaming on a phone and uh, the picture was lousy and the sound was worse. Uh, but you stuck in, that you stayed with us. In fact, our, our attendance during the pandemic went up as people joined us from all over the world, literally, to, uh, to worship with us. And then we developed uh, new uh, ways of doing it. We uh, hired some folk to help us, Kevin Nguyen and Alan Hansen, who helped us to perfect our video as well as our audio online, and uh, it really has, for a church our size, it is an amazingly good quality uh, live stream, if I do say so myself. Do you all agree? Uh, The Hennings are joining us from wherever they are. I I don't know if they're going through the Cape today. I hope not. That would be an awesome uh, thing, but uh, it's good to have them with us online. Um, It was exhausting, though. Um, I've never worked so hard trying to keep up with everything, keep up with the technology, and learn new ways of doing things. But it was exhilarating at the same time, and it was a great, great, exciting time. And for the past couple of years, since the pandemic has uh, dissolved, then we've been focused on disaffiliating from our denomination. And that has taken a great deal of energy and focus. But through it all, through all of the challenges, through all of the uh, hiccups and so forth, we've, we've uh, striven to maintain our eyes focused on Jesus, focused on what he wants of us, not what we want to do, but what he wants of us, and how he wants me to pastor this precious church, and I've done the best I can. And now as we approach my retirement this July, God has blessed us with a partnership with Free Life Community Church, also with La Cima and Vietnamese Evangelical Church, but uh, God has made it fairly clear to the leadership of this church that 
that especially Free Life Community has uh, come on board and worshiped with us, uh, sharing facilities, and uh, we've begun to dream and to posture ourselves as, uh, position ourselves as one church growing together. Uh, he's afforded us the opportunity God has to merge, at least functionally, our two congregations and to do things together, to worship together, to serve together. The future is exciting, and I believe as, as we keep our eyes on Jesus, that he will lead us into the future with hope, because that's what he has planned for us. And if we are able to disaffiliate from the UMC, then we might even be able to become one church organically. It's been my privilege these last year plus now to, uh, to have a friend in Paul Park, who is the pastor of Free Life Community Church, and uh, he, is, he has come on board, our staff here at the Fount, to help us in the transition, and he's going to come and share with you some visions that he has for our congregation as we move forward. Paul? One thing I know about church is uh, it's God's plan. Amen. Amen. And then uh, I thought we were, I thought I was supposed to be doing dialogue with Glenn, so I didn't really have anything prepared. So <laughs> Glenn's always prepared. I'm not as so much, but I'm led by the Holy Spirit, as everybody else is here. Amen. As uh, Pastor, Glenn, thank you so much, Pastor Glenn, for for sharing the history of the fountain. And as he was sharing, it uh, came in my mind. I don't know if. Uh, Anybody Marvel, Marvel fans? I don't know why. Maybe I hang out with Rick too much, but, uh, you know, comic books and anime is coming on to me a little bit. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't watch any of those things. But uh, as he was talking, um, I realized, like, the path that the fount took 10 years ago is very similar to the path that I was taking 10 years ago, but in different ways. You know what I mean? And so um, I don't know if that's a Marvel reference, but that's how I see it. And so whatever the fountain was doing in one timeline, I was doing kind of the similar thing 10 years ago. So I turned 40 like two weeks ago. Amen to that, right? So am I old or no? I'm good? Okay. I'm still good? All right. I don't feel like it in the mornings, but it's okay. Uh, so 10 years ago, 30, I just started ministry. Uh, I, I went back to school to Biola. Uh, I had a kid named Joshua and a wife named Rebecca that the Lord uh, graciously <laughs> uh, gifted me with, because uh, I know that I would not be here without her. And so I was in a, I was just doing youth ministry and at, at a United Methodist Church, at Orange Thorpe United Methodist Church. Um, and at that point, uh, God gave uh, me a vision of what ministry looks like. And some of you guys know I come from a more of a conservative Korean uh, context but as I, grew old, as I grew older and did ministry in many different ways, um, I, I, I was able to see that the gospel is for all, regardless of language, tradition, culture. God created his children. And so I started realizing that early on, saw the writings of the wall of, I need to know what that means to me. And so I started, so I left the Korean church. I left the Korean context and started my journey of where are the people of God that loves the Bible? That was my search for the next 10 years. Where are the people that loves the Lord? Where are the people that believes that the Bible is the word of God? Where are the people that fear God? Where are the people that love each other as God loves us, that Christ loves us? Where are those people? And so I started searching those people, and God gave me direction to serve in the different churches in the United Methodist Church, but also gave me barriers and challenges, as we all know, when it comes to denominations and the restrictions that they have, especially with the United Methodist Church, and continue to pray for them. And so I had to leave the United Methodist Church because of theological differences. And so when I left, um, at that point, God, allowed, uh, God gave me the vision of church planting, and this is about four years ago. Um, and so it was tough. And so uh, one thing, so my wife is a pastor's kid. And she said, um, uh, promise me two things. One, we will not work at a Korean church. So I kept that promise. 
And two, we will not church plant because she's also come from a church planting family as I have as well. My grandmother's a pastor. My dad's a pastor. We did church home for 30 years. And so I said, well, I'll try. But obviously God had a different plan, right? He has a new plan for me. Um, and so we endeavored on this church plant thing. Now, this was 2019. What happened 2020 February? The pandemic happened. As you shut down, at least you had a church that you came to. I didn't even know what a church looked like at 2020 um, because of the shutdown. And so where I was supposed to learn how to church plant um, at a church in Long Beach, um, I could not go to the campus. I didn't, I didn't see anybody for a year and a half. And so, but I realized that church planting and how to develop church doesn't come from man. It comes from God. And so what I did during those year and a half is I prayed a lot. Um, I should be a big prayer, but I'm not. My wife covers that load for me. But I prayed. I was on my knees every single day because, remember, I left the church that was kind of cush and took care of me, and now I'm on my own. I had no uh, church, uh, you know, covering me. I had no people covering me because I left. Um, and so I had only God. Have you ever felt that way before where it's like there's nobody there? But you know what? God is there. And sometimes we miss that. We miss that part of our faith. And so I held on to God till now. And so what I realized, when you hang on to God, God gives you more visions. God gives you clearer visions. God gives you a stronger mission, which is same with everybody, is to make disciples of Jesus Christ um, and make God known. And so with a handful of 10 families, all come from different backgrounds, we started a small Bible study and continued on meeting, ducking from the law, as they say, right? Meeting in people's homes and, and whatever. And then we, we, we started a church plan in Westminster, and then a year after, we needed a place to worship, and Pastor Glenn and Rick opened the doors to do a small little Christmas Eve service with 20 of us here at, at the chapel, and I didn't think nothing of it. But obviously, Pastor Glenn is way wiser than I am, and so he asked me the question, is, gonna, is this going to continue? I said, what? Our friendship? Of course. <laughs> but I didn't have no idea of coming here, and I prayed, and I was like, all right, well, we'll see what happens. And so we started a, a brand new relationship here with the found with you guys. And, and some of you guys knew who I was because I preached here before and worshiped here a couple of times, it was like six years ago. And then we started going. And our people loved it already. They said, we're home, Paul. And I was like, hold on. Well, maybe to us, but they don't, the fountain doesn't know that yet. So hold on. And so we started talking and we started praying and I started meeting uh, some of you guys and, and having coffee and conversations. And all, and all along this, Pastor Glenn was very just generous of just, um, I had a lot of questions and me being a young pastor, a lot of things like, why do we do this? Why do we do that? Why can't we do this? And so he was just like, let's just let the Lord take it. And every time he said that, I just shut up. <laughs> I was like, all right, you're right. And so Throughout this time, I realized that, again, like Pastor Glenn said, it's not my plans, it's God's plan. And so the thing that I know about God's plan is sometimes it doesn't fit our plan. Most of the time it doesn't. But if you've stuck with God's plan, you see the blessings at the other side. Amen? You see it. You see the, the, the place that, that God is taking us because we're holding on to God so tight. And so... I believe that this merger or marriage or whatever we want to call it, this union of people that love the Lord, people that fear the Lord, people that just want to love each other as Christ loves us, this must happen. Um, because obviously we know that everything in the world is trying to separate us. Amen? The world is trying to separate us. Government is trying to separate us. Cities are trying to separate us. But God is stronger. God is wiser. God is in front of us and behind us, protecting us. And so as we go forward for the next six months, can I ask you guys just to pray first for Pastor Glenn as he continues to hear where the Lord is sending him next, and second, for Free Life Community Church, because we're young. We're young, and some of us are dumb, <laughs> and we're immature, and we just like to move, move, move. But as we see the faithful um, and mature Christians that are sitting here. I've learned a lot already from you guys of how to be consistent, how to, be, um, how to persevere, how to endure and all these things. And so we need that. We need that. And so I think what free life can bring is that, that, that vibrancy of what does it mean to do crazy ministry that will reach the next generation and the generation after that. 
But in order to stand on that, we need strong pillars, a strong foundations where, yes, we may mess up, but I could have Mike call me and say, Paul, I'm going to cover you. I'm going to pick you up. I mean, he might not be picking me up now, but he can pick me up spiritually, right? And so he can pick me up, pray for us. And so as we continue to come together, there's going to be changes. So make it uncomfortable. But as we know God's plan, it is uncomfortable. But there's also things that you're going to be like, yes, this is what I've been praying for. This is what I've been envisioning of what the fount can be in this community, in my life, in my family's life. And so by God's grace, I will do everything that I can to ensure that the people of God continues to stay the people of God because we, because we preach and teach the word of God. Amen. That's all I can promise you, that I will be faithful, that I'll be humble as I can, that, that I will ask for forgiveness, that I will confess my sins, and I will get every wisdom from this good book. That's what I can do. Um, that's what I've been doing for my family. I'm not a smart man. I'm okay looking. Maybe camera, I look a little better, but I'm okay looking. But I, but, but I love the Lord. I love the Lord with everything I have. Uh, you could ask a lot of our people. I don't really care about systems a lot, which is kind of you know, concerning at times, but I do love the Lord, and I will hear the Lord, and I'll do whatever the Lord asks me to do, sacrifice everything that I need to sacrifice. And so continue to pray for us, continue uh, to pray for what is God is doing in front of us, uh, and we need prayer. We need everybody on their knees praying every single morning, praying, 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 um, and that's, that's all we can bank on. So I think that's what I was supposed to say. I don't know, right, Pastor Glenn? Okay. Uh, and if you have complaints, you know Pastor Glenn's email. And so uh, God bless you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. It's Pastor Paul at the Church. <laughs> what Paul forgot to tell you is that he is an ordained elder in the Free Methodist Church. And uh, the Free Methodist Church is a sis sister denomination to the United Methodist Church and the Global Methodist Church and the Nazarene Church and all of the Wesleyan churches. And as such, he is fully uh, ordained and certified uh, to, to lead uh, this church and his church. And what we're looking forward to in the coming months is uh, ways to integrate in our, uh, in our fellowship, uh, small groups. Uh, we'd love to have some of the Free Life folk join uh, some of our life groups or Bible studies or fellowship groups. We'd like to have some Fount folks join in with the Free Life uh, small groups and get to know each other that way on that level is a much better way than, well, obviously on Sunday morning since they don't meet until 1130, it's tough uh, for us to have fellowship, but we will plan some things, uh, some get-togethers between the services in the coming months that will enable us to also get to know each other. Uh, but ask questions if you have any. Uh, we'd be happy to answer. The church council has been pondering this for several months, and uh, I, I'd be happy to sit down with you and talk you through whatever uh, questions you have. Um, but let's just, let's, as Paul said, let's let uh, the Lord lead us in this. And, and as we go forward, be open to new possibilities and new ways of doing things and new things to do. Uh, as we serve this community and beyond uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.